إن الوقت يداهمنا ونهاية هذا العقد الحاسم باتت على بعد سنوات قليلة علينا أن نستغلها لنحسم خلالها هذه المعركة على النحو الذي نريده ونرتضيه حان الوقت وقت العمل والتنفيذ And our planet is fast approaching tipping points that will make climate chaos irreversible. We are on a highway to climate hell with our foot still on the accelerator. Because the future of our children and our children are based on the actions that we take. اليوم If we are truly to make this cop the one that drives implementation of the pledges made in Glasgow we must equip ourselves with every tool and resource to facilitate our path to true net zero Many young people were robbed from our future. We've been forced to grow, to act, to think like adults, because we cannot watch as our future is shut. But let the African COP be a different COP. Let the African COP be an action COP. Good evening to you from wherever you're tuned, uh, watching uh, Farmers Media. Thank you so much for staying tuned and keeping it locked uh, to our Facebook channel. How are you doing? How is your afternoon? What have you had for lunch? Myself, I've had uh, some, is it called green grams and chapati? Mm. And um, Waki was telling me at CG, someone needs to take, I don't know, two cups of, it's, it's only recommended for someone to take two cups of coffee per day. Yeah, yeah, you don't not too much caffeine what, so what happens if you overdo it i know it's your it's not good for your heart because it's a stimulant you're already overworking your heart by having it you know you know the work of caffeine it's just I a stimulant uh, a stimulant yeah. so i want to talk like i'm not a medic so <laughs> uh, what i know is not recommended eh? so like uh, Oh no! It's like, uh, I, it's was like, con I was confusing caffeine with nicotine. Ah, uh, sorry. <laughs> nicotine is in, the, uh, in the tobacco. Yes, in, on, in tobacco. So the difference uh, there, caffeine and uh, tobacco, ni? Uh, one is a. Uh, they're both stimulants, mm. but nicotine has adverse effects to your body. What? Yeah, nicotine, not. Eh, hey, nicotine. Yeah, nicotine uh, so those people uh, who smoke like a whole packet of cigarettes. Mm. Yeah, those, and then you know what happens. Uh, Smokers' lifespan are actually lower than people are non-smokers. That is why uh, they, they keep telling people that uh, even secondary smoke is enough to get you having lung cancer. Mm. Uh, so the the, second, uh, the, secondary the, the smoke, smoke that yeah. we usually inhale after those yeah. people who smoke. And then it reduces, the, the thing is it reduces your immunity. The most important thing is your immunity. So you can, you can imagine a smoker and then you are susceptible to diseases yeah because your immunity actually is low that's why you're seeing they tell people to you know cigarette smoking is harmful to your health you know mm -hmm. when they put that caption mm -hmm. you need to understand why yeah but then how come how, they, they, they've not put the such kinds of things on the coffee no, so coffee it doesn't. Like, I mean, do no, not like it is bad. It is just an advice you're being given. Yeah, mm -hmm. do not take too much coffee or too much energy drink like Red Bull. You see, mm -hmm. you're limited to two. 
because that team you know what you don't what it does is just stimulates your body yeah but n- naturally your body should be able to stimulate in itself mm-hmm. so what we do is just put like come a quick to you know to, <laughs> to just improve your test yeah. yeah so at least today i've learned something new not more than two cups of coffee per day strong actually, coffee especially needs, black coffee uh, yeah especially black coffee because i actually realize sometimes when i take coffee i usually get a terrible headache that's, yeah, yeah no you, your body also gets addicted to it most of the time that's why you see those especially tea mm-hmm. those people who take tea get uh, uh, serious addiction problems that's mm-hmm. why your body now uh, starts reacting by causing headaches if it doesn't get it that's when you drink you get that you relax mm-hmm. it relaxes you same to nicotine cigarettes you know those people who haven't smoked they, they don't even hold this <laughs> <laughs> they won't even hold Wait. this yeah that's addiction addiction <laughs> is quite bad and you know uh, there, there are places where uh, caffeine the, uh, some countries that caffeine are treated like uh, addictive substances mm-hmm. yeah there are places where you're not even allowed to take coffee but why do people even sell such kinds of things like what <laughs> yeah, so the, 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 That was just a by the way, by uh, the way. The, the main discuss. topic we want to discuss is uh, the climate carnage and uh, the ongoing COP27 summit that is currently taking place at uh, in Egypt at Sharm El Sheikh. And um, yesterday we had the heads of state uh, addressing the members, uh, people in the in the summit, and more than a hundred world leaders gathered at uh, COP27 in Sharm El Sheikh, Egypt, to work towards implementation of existing climate agreements. The summit kicked off with an opening plenary, which we have already showed uh, President Abdel Fattah El Sisi, which featured a range of other prominent uh, speakers from heads of state to climate leaders who delivered messages on uh, the importance of urgent action to address climate change. And also our president, uh, the newly elected uh, Dr. William Ruto, also got a chance uh, to um, uh, give out a speech. Uh, have you got, Have you watched, the, did you follow the speech yeah, I, I by did, President I did Ruto? Follow it. I followed it word by word. Yeah. <laughs> What and, did you? Uh, and I know I realize uh, he had a very strong opinion, or he, he had a strong message to send to to the world, mm. and I wanted to quote some of the words that he said. Yeah, mm. uh, developed nations in committing uh, uh, in commitment to this uh, climate agreement, yeah, mm. uh, embra- are using delayed tactics and procrastination mm-hmm. in delayed implementation and delivery of past re- resolutions. Yeah, mm-hmm. so you can imagine. Pledges like the pledges that were made in Copenhagen 13 years ago. You can imagine. 13 years ago, uh, have never been committed to uh, financially. Mm-hmm. We are talking about 100 billion dollars per year by developed nations, two developing nations. Mm-hmm. They're supposed to be putting a fund of 100 billion to combat uh, climate change mm-hmm. and uh, come up with the strategies of. Uh, of uh, looking at climate uh, intervention in terms of uh, climate adverse climate uh, uh, issues. Mm-hmm. So when you look at 100 billion, if you multiply it by 13 years, those are, that's a lot of uh, so much money over several years. And unfortunately, countries are still doing what they do best in uh, in carbon emission. Mm-hmm. We saw that India has decided to double its coal uh, usage mm-hmm. in regards in disregards to the Copenhagen agreement mm-hmm. the, the Paris agreement uh, the Kyoto pro- protocol yeah. so they're like if China cannot do it you know who the person who brought all these problems uh, is uh, one Donald Trump who was very non-committal to climate change mm-hmm. and during that time the world now decided to take a, a blind eye towards uh, climate ch- uh, change why should we China is like, why is America not doing this? And mm-hmm. we are being blamed. So what did India do? India decided to say, you know what? We have a lot of coal. In the, we have a lot of coal mm-hmm. and we can do it. So there's one thing that uh, the president said, and I really uh, want to acknowledge that. Mm-hmm. He said that uh, despite Kenya ha- having very minimal resources, mm-hmm. despite Kenya not being at par with the industrialized nation, we've made full commitment in... Uh, and following all these uh, climate agreements, mm-hmm. we're very, and then Kenya, according to the president, 
has a lot of reserve of coal, coal reserve, yeah. lots and lots of coal reserve. But we've decided to use uh, uh, green, green energy. Ninety-three percent of Kenyan energy is green energy. Ninety-three mm-hmm. percent, mm-hmm. despite us talking about having lots and lots of coal reserves. Mm-hmm. You know that we know that was basically what what he, what he meant yeah. by saying that. Mm-hmm. He's just sending a threat. You know, if we decide to yeah. to sell to China or to sell to <laughs> India, mm. the way we are searching for money to pay our our, <laughs> our, debts. our debts, we mm. can sell coal. We can, we can just trade with China because yes. I know we have a big debt uh, with if China. You, if you tell, uh, actually, India is actually the, one of the biggest consumers of coal. Mm-hmm. If you tell India we have lots of coal with us, mm-hmm. I. She does it too. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, uh, the problem we have with the SGR will <laughs> will be minimal. <laughs> yes. So basically, uh, there's a lot of uh, stuff the president talked about, and uh, it's it's really interesting to see the reaction of uh, world leaders um, on the same. Now this COP27 is coming. It's I think the 30th session of uh, the climate talks that have been ongoing, and just like the president uh, mentioned in his speech. Uh, developed countries are using delayed tactics and um, as much as um, the summit is going on and um, the African leaders are pushing for uh, the developed countries uh, to provide funding and uh, to come up with solutions of re- reducing greenhouse gas emissions, what should, uh, uh, what, uh, how should countries get involved in this whole discussion for people to reach an agreement? Because at the end of the day, what what is coming out, it's like people are playing a blame game. Oh, you, you are releasing more gas than us, so you need to provide more funding. But at the end of the day, uh, it's the entire population of the world that is uh, getting affected by the, the effects of climate change. First of all, the first thing they need to do is to follow the agreement as it were mm-hmm. from the beginning set aside uh, set aside funds and the, uh, work as per your carbon uh, emission uh, quota that you've been given yeah mm-hmm. and look at how you're going to commit uh, in helping poorer nations mm-hmm. uh, that is uh, directly on the pari agreement mm-hmm. how do the poor countries let's let's look at you see what the president said today we've lost about 14 million herds of cattle imagine uh why is africa ask yourself why africa is uh uh, is one that's really suffering Mm -hmm. because we do not have uh, mitigation plans yeah Mm -hmm. we do not have enough funds to help us in times of crisis Mm -hmm. other countries are you see like uh, countries like the united states they have adverse weathers uh, like uh, the hurricanes and the typhoons but they have a way of uh, you know uh, mitigating controlling you know Mm -hmm. but now if you look at poorer countries they are not well they don't have enough resources that are going to help them fight uh, such adverse effects of climate change and that is why they're saying put aside this amount of money uh, 100 billion dollars when we have funds like this kenya won't go and start begging world cross uh, uh, red cross for money to help people are suffering you think like here in here in uh, uh Marsa beat and to kind of how people are really struggling our people government is really trying to get money so that money that was set aside could be really helping but on the flip side eh, on the flip, you see why uh the developed nations are not are not very non-committal to providing such funds mm-hmm. you know we saw what happened to covid funds <laughs> we saw what happened to covid funds yeah why should we give these poor countries money and we and we, why, why should we help them mm-hmm. you see yeah. it's like you who's really struggled to be where you are mm-hmm. now you're told to help your neighbor who's also just there doing mm-hmm. nothing mm-hmm. so at the end of the day they're like we cannot do this Cause I, I, I wanted to ask because this is cop 27 last year there was cop 26 and there have been other summits like this of uh, in the last uh, almost 29, 28 years ago. You mean to tell me no funds have been released ever since these talks began? Uh, you know, uh, we really need to 
thank God that uh, Joe Biden became the president of the United States and one of its, his key agenda was climate change. Acknowledging, just acknowledging that climate change is a problem, something that the Republicans have never wanted to accept. Mm-hmm. Now, by doing that, uh, United States has been spearheading, uh, has actually released a lot of funds mm-hmm. to mitigate climate change. Mm-hmm. That one has to be, to be said, yeah? But now, did that push me, pull you kind of situation where big countries like China are, don't want to commit? Mm-hmm. Instead, China wants to fund for industrialization in Africa, like the China Belt Movement, mm-hmm. which involves a lot of um, construction. And well, it, it beats no logic when we destroy trees for the sake of uh, industrialization, mm-hmm. you see. And that is more reasons why uh, America came in strongly and uh, started uh, looking at, uh, started opposing China's uh, coming into Africa. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's quite, there are countries that are committed, especially the Scandinavian nations, that uh, are very interested in combating climate change. Mm-hmm. But there are countries like Russia and, uh, and the others who do not give a damn. Yes. Yeah, and in your opinion, uh, because uh, as much as we talk about uh, climate, uh, the effects of uh, climate change, what exactly are these contentious issues that, um, especially countries in Africa? Because uh, listening through Ruto's uh, President Ruto's speech, he talked about Africa being the worst uh, affected by the effects of greenhouse gas emissions and yet we are the, the uh, countries that are produced the least amount of gas as compared to developed countries. What are these contentious issues that uh, the leaders are focusing on and how can um, even the smallholder farmer assist the, world, the African leaders uh, to bring out these contentious issues? Uh, but the one of uh, one of the resolutions was uh, I don't know, I think the Kyoto Protocol where where they started trading carbon. Mm-hmm. It's really helped Africans. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's really helped Africans because they really uh, people have really sold their their carbon credits. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Now that is a direct that has been a direct benefit to to the common African farmer. Mm-hmm. But now. The adverse, I mean, we were, when we talk about Africa being affected, we are talking about this adverse effect of, uh, of climate. And you know, Africa is actually located at the equator, mm-hmm. directly at the equator. But now, the weather affects the whole world. Let's, we cannot just uh, rule out Africa that, oh, it's only us. In, in Asia, we have strong typhoons. We have, in America, we have continuous. In fact, we are getting into the, the hurricane season. Uh, in 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 Australia, you saw last year we had serious wildfires. So you cannot just say that it's Africa that's affected. Mm. In fact, we are not that bad. Mm. But the problem is we are affected because we do not have the capacity to help the poor mm-hmm. who are really suffering, directly suffering because of climate change. You see, uh, like Noah was talking about, do we give them food or we give them money? You see, mm-hmm. that's where the issue is. Mm-hmm. We cannot give somebody who's uh, hungry money. Mm-hmm. What will you do with that money? Yeah, where will they get the food eventually? Yeah. Because the reason why they are not feeding is because there is no food at all. Yeah, there is no food at mm-hmm. all. So uh, you look at uh, that situation where you are told get this money. So it's either between you getting the money or the food. Now, Africa Africa has really been affected because much of the population uh, actually in the lower bracket, poverty bracket. Mm-hmm. And we do not have capacity to generate income, you see. Mm-hmm. We are so dependent on agriculture that once agriculture is affected, the whole livelihood is totally, the whole chain is affected. Mm-hmm. Uh, for example, let's look at uh, agricultural chain. Mm-hmm. If we don't, if let's say, for example, uh, onions, for example, if onions do not, uh, we don't have onions this time, the transport sector is affected. Mm-hmm. Uh, sales are affected. There are people who are directly uh, who directly benefit from from the chain. Eh? Mm-hmm. Uh, the the, uh, the economies of scales. Everybody is affected. Mm-hmm. So remember, agriculture is the backbone of almost all ag- uh, uh, all African nations. Mm-hmm. And if we if 
nothing is done if africa if uh, farm uh, if agriculture is affected then the whole livelihood is affected mm. so that is why it's quite important that's why you're seeing agriculture is directly affected by climate and that's why africa is ge- getting the highest uh, they're getting the highest uh, effect mm. of climate change mm. yeah very interesting and uh, there's a conversation i had with one dominic wanji here the uh, founder and ceo of biogas international and i got to ask him uh, his reactions regarding uh, cop 27 and he had a very strong message uh, to the developed countries. I think I uh, will just listen in to what he said and then you give me a reaction as well okay. on what you think about COP27. Stop dumping Western knowledge or Western ideas in Africa. You cannot develop a solution for Africa from a laboratory in, 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 in Europe or in the States. In Africa, we have the solutions. What we don't have is the financing. There are so many um, innovative innovations that will solve a lot of Africa's problems if only they could be financed. Our governments don't support um, uh, local innovation. We have, we have a, I, I don't know, um, you know, someone asks you, we've had customers come here. We had one customer from uh, a Kenyan who was working in South Africa came here and said that they like the technology, but um, they, they'd heard that it was from South Africa and they haven't seen it in South Africa. And we said, no, actually, it's from Kenya. And immediately their wallet went straight back in their pocket and they left. You know, Kenyans don't trust Kenyans. We don't have any, Kenyan innovation doesn't have any support from the Kenyan government. So we need Africa to support African innovation. The, the solutions are right here. Uh, we need our education system to start, stop, stop with the colonial education system where we are reading history books and stuff that is irrelevant to us today. We need to learn about what is relevant to Africa today. How do we get into, let's stop using farming as a punishment for the students, go outside and you know, dig the farm because you didn't do your homework. It's got to be looked at as a, you know, a, a very dignified profession. Uh, we've got to stop with the chemicals, stop with the GMOs, that I think is the message we need to drive to our current government, not even at the at the COP27 um, uh, event. Um, and also, our government needs we need to stop uh, importing chemicals. Um, something in the region of uh, 40 to 50 percent of the aggravate chemicals we have in our stores are banned in the countries where they are manufactured. How hypocritical, how hypocritical is that? That you produce a chemical. It's banned in your own country because it's bad for the soil, bad for the water, bad for the people, but you're allowed to export it to, to a, th- a developing country like Africa or like Asia. I mean, it is ridiculous. If something is banned in the country of manufacture, it should be banned globally. The international world, the international trade should prevent anybody from exporting something that they will not use at home. It is criminal that they're being allowed to export stuff that they will not use at home themselves. Um, yeah, so we really need to focus on, we do have numerous resources that we can get ourselves out of poverty. We need political will and we need the West to stop trying to dump technologies on us. I was at the AfroCities meeting. The AfroCities meeting was so expensive to attend that hardly any African uh, exhibitors were there. All of the people were there, all the African delegates, all the governments sent their delegates to the meeting. Uh, I got a chance to present through a French organization. I was very, very happy that they, they allowed me. They were actually in Uganda, um, and they reached out to me and asked me if I would do a talk. Uh, um, I got a standing ovation when I, when I, when I demonstrated our, our recycle center um, on, on a, in a PowerPoint presentation. Everyone else at that meeting was people from Europe, people from the States, dumping technology on Africa. Technologies that doesn't work for them there, and they think it's going to come and work for us here. It's all business. It's not about finding solutions. It's about making money out of ignorance of people. That has to stop. We need to start focusing on which solutions work, which ones can be scaled, and let's fix our own problems at home. I need to give him a stand innovation for that, you know. <laughs> That's a stunning innovation for you. 
What's, <laughs> your, take? What's your take? On that? No, you said everything. Gosh, <laughs> and you need, you know, you need to be playing that almost every day. Play that every day so that people can hear. Whatever I said is worth a thousand uh, uh, wisdom. Mm. He said a lot, a lot. In the few minutes he's talked, uh, he said a lot. And you know, these are the people we need to to have. Let me just give you a, a clear indication of how annoying that this is. Mm. I was invited to Germany uh, to to do the project, the aquaponic project. But now these guys who are doing that project in Senegal mm-hmm. as a prototype. They're doing it as a prototype to to show people that you can you can actually raise fish vegetables in the middle of the desert. In okay. the middle of the desert. And we did their project, it worked out very well. I came back to Kenya. I was explaining I was called by KTN News. Uh, we were having a show there. Mm-hmm. I was explaining to people that how uh, we did a project deep in the desert of uh, Senegal mm-hmm. and we are able to, right now they are producing a lot of food. They are doing about every, they've harvested about 10,000 fish out of our project and the greenhouse keeps on feeding. You see like uh, lettuce does, uh, after every three weeks they they harvest. Mm-hmm. In the middle of the desert where I remember we used to have dust storms serious dust storms and serious but right now this is a model like i think if anybody googles to aquaponic in senegal it's it comes up from so many german uh german um websites mm-hmm. now these are zungus who come to do such things in africa mm-hmm. and then i remember during uh, the show somebody called and asked you know why do why are you going to do such projects in senegal mm-hmm. in a desert mm-hmm. well our own country we have Turukana people are dying of hunger there. Mm-hmm. Tell them, we have the knowledge. Yeah. Why can't the government just use our te- expertise? Why does white man notice our expertise, mm-hmm. takes it to, to be used somewhere, a Kenyan going all the way to West Africa to do imagine. such a thing, mm-hmm. and he leaves his own country mm-hmm. to see his people suffer. What he said is lack of funds. If we have funds, we have big innovators. Mm-hmm. We have people who are coming up with lots and lots of... Uh, innovative ideas. Where did Mpesa knowledge come from? Here in Kenya. Mm-hmm. Uh, there, oh yeah, there's a uh, student from, uh, no, 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 which university, is it Kiba or Machakos University? Yes, Machakos University. Mm-hmm. They came up with a freezer, uh, a cooler freezer. It's called, uh, it has a Swahili name, a freezer technology, how they can come up with charcoal and it freezes. Mm-hmm. Do you know China has taken that idea mm-hmm. and they're using it in Chinese space station. Wow. Kenyan idea from Machakos University. Of how you need to tell us that idea, exactly what it is. The, it, the yeah, Chakos I'm sure if you, if, you, if you will look at it, we'll mm-hmm. take a look at it. And I, was, and I was looking at it in DWTV. Not even a Kenyan <laughs> station can talk about that. Right? Mm-hmm. Uh, how you they come up with a cooling system mm-hmm. and this thing is being used in Chinese space station wow. no no it's not even written in any of our old and it was during the time when Kenya was in uh, a lot of uh, campaign mm-hmm. we are thinking about how we need to wait we need to wait and at the end of the day you don't have innovative ideas that can <laughs> solve the problem of food yeah so I yeah. think Dominic has hit the nail on uh, the head and uh, keep playing that every day mm-hmm. every day I'll, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll even text him after this I tell him man mm-hmm. that you, you people you have such a clip and you just sat on it <laughs> You need we are Africans. So yeah, you no, 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 you put it in your 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 Facebook ads of almost two hundred thousand followers. Yes. Put that so that people can be able to listen to it, so that they resonate with what's happening. You but know? why is it that Africans don't like Africans themselves? Like their countries, even Egypt, they, they don't believe they're in Africa. South Africa. It's, it's like it's Americans. like right now you you do. I've seen it. You have something good. You paste it on your Facebook. Mm-hmm. Very few people will like. And then the moment you just say, hey, uh, I've lost somebody, um, we have some, a friend of mine has uh, had an issue, the RIPs you'll get there, you can imagine. people are just out there to, you know, to condole with you, but yeah. they can never be happy with you. Mm-hmm. That is a problem. That's basically what takes us behind us as mm-hmm. Africans. Mm-hmm. We don't want to support each other because we look at each other as competition. Mm-hmm. And basically why? Because of the education system. 
you look at we are together here we look at each other as who will be number one who will be number two mm -hmm. and that now it makes us become rivals mm -hmm. ah well, you were number one last time i'll see mm -hmm. you become so bitter yeah. now you you extend that bitterness into to livelihood children are no longer social they look at each other as competitive where does it go it goes out, out in school after in, after university at your workplace you look at your colleague you start competing the kind of clothes you're wearing the kind of cars mm -hmm. you look at your neighbor eh? your neighbor buys a car you, you won't sleep <laughs> you will not sleep at all because your neighbor because of the system that we the education even system yes they're telling us be number one number two now you're creating it's like a divide and rule yeah. so it's very hard now to be cooperative as 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 africans mm. because we look at each other as rivals or even if someone comes with a new innovation there's someone else who is working to improve that innovation yes. uh, uh, so that trust me, can... have, you, have you ever gone even to kitengela here mm -hmm. yeah somebody will open a butchery mm -hmm. here mm -hmm. not one month later another <laughs> one will open just next there <laughs> Yeah. Uh, this is a mall <laughs> somebody it doesn't even nairobi is even worse mm. you build a mall here somebody will go and get a loan build another mall there mm. yes there so you are you wonder why you're competing oh. and, and that's why there's and a policy life. there's a policy in malls these days that mm. if you if you have a mall mm. it's only one kind of business you'll have ah. see not like a phone here a phone and then another another phone mm. no 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 in Kenya, you open an Mpesa cash, or your neighbor will go and get money, and <laughs> it's like he's waiting for you to do <laughs> that. Waiting for ideas. Yeah, they he's don't waiting. have ideas. Oh no, oh, this is all oh, this money is making money. I'll start the same idea. Yes, you, let's do. you work smartly. Even if someone tries to copy your caponic system, yes, ni ngumu sana. It, it takes it takes time to and then you know like no st staying this mm. you know a few it takes trial and error. Mm. Take took me years. To perfect something, yeah. you know, it. I've seen people who've tried, like uh, there's somebody we were working with somewhere who mm. decided to take the project, you know, to, to try to replicate the project. <laughs> Went and replicated, <laughs> bought about uh, so many fish, which yeah. they all died. The system is not. What working. happened? He tried to replicate. He was copying, mm. just trying to just see. Oh, this is how he, you know. Text pictures. <laughs> text pictures. He doesn't know the science. Mm. He doesn't know anything, so he's, he rushes and builds for somebody, mm. messes up the whole thing. Wow. And that is why you are seeing these people who are really in a rush to make money. Mm. You do something, it doesn't work out, you go out and start rushing, saying, ah, these things don't work. Yeah, they're, they're just a scam. Yeah, they don't I work. I know, uh, Moki, we need to release you because oh, uh, yeah. you're heading out into some other meeting. But uh, this discussion, we shall continue it tomorrow morning in the breakfast show. This was just an introduction uh, to what is going on at uh, the COP27. And uh, there is a lot there. We have a lot of reactions from people like Dominic. Uh, he has just uh, started us off uh, on this uh, topic of uh, climate. And um, we'll be taking a short breather and um, we'll be back shortly with an interview that uh, Noah Nasiali had uh, with... Uh, uh, Cynthia Rosenway, the laureate uh, of uh, the World Food Prize this year. She's one of the ladies who has come up with a technology on, um, she draws crops on a computer and uh, detects climatic conditions that work for Oh yeah, there's, there's, a, there's an app, I think it's app, app, that I also use to see the kind of disease that a, a plant, you just look at it on your iPhone, you look at the plant, the leaves, it will see if it has a deficiency. It will just tell you add what? Uh, you overthink. <laughs> you have to overthink. <laughs> you, you overthink. Yes. Like, me, if I just, uh, if you just, I try to connect one wire like this and it it fails to work. Yeah, that's it. I'm, <laughs> I'm done. So we'll be taking a short breather. Uh, do keep watching a farmer's media. We'll be back shortly uh, with uh, Noah's interview with uh, Cynthia. Keep watching a farmer's. Thank you. Thank you.